HLP, that stands for the high level pattern. This swing technique has transformed hundreds, if not thousands of baseball players' careers. But if you've been following me for a while, then you know it also comes with a ton of hate from both coaches and players. Okay, but what I'm gonna do for you guys in this video is I'm gonna break down what HLP really is, how you can start implementing it in your game right now and start learning how to do the drills. I'm gonna do it in the most simple way that I possibly can so everybody understands it. Because it's really easy to hate on something that you don't understand. And from afar, it looks so different than what you've been taught in the past that it's really easy to just wash it out and say, no, I'm not gonna do that, that's not for me. Um, some of the most popular comments on it are that it only works if you're 6'8", 280 pounds, if you're big and strong, um, and that it doesn't work for the smaller guys, the younger guys, and that it can't hit the high pitch, and so on and so forth. You guys have all seen the hate um, that comes with it. In this video, I'm hoping to clear some of that up for you. So as long as you come to it with an open mind, you should be able to start applying these concepts in your hitting right now and get better from it. Okay, so to start this thing off, I'm going to cover the hand pivot point the rear leg, and then I'm gonna go over some key fundamental staple drills that we use here at OPP to help guys feel it when they're first learning it. So I'm not gonna go over every single drill for HLP that we use. There is a, an entire library of drills that I could go through, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. It would take entirely too long, and most of you wouldn't be able to really implement those kind of drills right now anyway. So I'm just gonna cover the basics, and I hope that you leave with a better understanding. All right, so step one with new athletes is to figure out the rear leg, okay? Usually you don't get it on the first day. It takes some doing to actually get used to it, but nonetheless, this is where we start, mainly for two reasons. Number one, it's a lot less controversial, okay? Um, when a new athlete gets onboarded with us, we don't want to immediately start throwing the hand pivot at them right out of the gate unless they're a little bit more, you know, advanced in their training. Maybe it's a pro guy and he already has a solid rear leg, things like that. You know, there's some nuances there. We kind of pick and choose how to go about it with each athlete. But for the most part, the rear leg is the best place to start. Because even if you just get the rear leg down and you feel what it's like to actually control your load and be ready on time, which is at pitch release, which I'll get into in a little bit, then that will significantly make you a better hitter because you'll be buying yourself more time. So if you give a really crappy hitter more time, they'll become a better hitter. If you give a good hitter more time, they'll become a great hitter. And so the first thing we wanna do is give you more time. How do you buy more time? Learn how to control your load, okay? So when we start with a new guy, there are some drills that we get into, but first I wanna cover the concept of the rear leg. So when we coil, Okay, I wanna to try to take my back right pocket for a right-handed hitter. Everything I'm gonna reference in this video is gonna be for a right-handed guy just because I'm right-handed. But uh, we wanna take this back right pocket towards the pitcher, okay? And it's this feeling of having tension right around the hip. For some people, they kind of feel it on their leg, uh, kind of up their hamstring, up their glute a little bit. But it's not us sitting back in our heels or hinging or getting just more into the backside like this. That's a false feel. I don't like that idea at all, okay? Instead, what I try to teach my guys is to actually have the weight of their foot kind of on the outer half of their foot, okay? Because you'll notice that if my weight's in my heels, it, that's more like I'm coming to a balanced position, right? Like I, I'm just gonna get balanced on my leg, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna coil there, okay? And if my weight kind of shifts to the inside half of my foot, that's where this tibia bone right here will start to change angles. Once this shin changes angles like this, I'm going to fall because of that. Okay, and I don't wanna fall forward. I don't wanna have a ton of momentum going towards the pitcher because we have to be able to hit fast and slow within the same pitch. So for most people uh, who have a hard time controlling the rear leg, their swing is very lungy. You'll see uh, in lower level players, their takes are very at the ball like this, okay? You don't see many takes like that in the big leagues, especially from some of the best players in the world because that shows that they're susceptible to fast and slow. They can't change the speeds by manipulating their load very well. Or a better way to say that is they can't adapt to the speed changes by manipulating their load. Okay, but higher level players can. There's a reason why when you watch some of the best players in the world and they um, get a change up and it's low in a way that their take is still here when they do it, as opposed to here, like you see in little league and lower level high school and college players. That is because of momentum. So if I don't know how to coil my rear leg, I don't have any concept of what's going on back here, it's too easy for me to just try to find a balance point and then right when the pitcher starts to release it, I just start going forward. That gives me a minimal amount of time to make a decision on when to swing. I wanna have the most time possible. So if my momentum starts going forward like this, I have to swing when I have to swing. I only have so much time to get it off 
because when my front foot lands, now I gotta do this scissor thing and throw my hands at it, and we all know that's a bad feeling, especially on soft and away. How do we fix it? How do we get to the point where we can control the rear leg? Now, let's get into some of the drills. The first drill, I call it a stretch and fire, okay? It's where we are 45 degrees open. This drill, I see so much online getting just used and abused from people who don't know how to use it. It does help with direction. It does help with your load, but you could easily do it wrong. So if you're just sitting open and trying to pound balls over to the second baseman for a right-handed hitter, that is not the idea of this drill at all. The idea of this drill is I wanna feel loaded onto my rear leg. So I want my rear leg to be completely weighted. My front toe is just gonna be down. It's gonna be useless, okay? Now from here, we're gonna put our weight on the side of our foot, kind of like what I talked about earlier. And then we're gonna take this back right pocket towards the pitcher, okay? As we do that, I start to create this tension in my rear leg and I feel like I'm wound up so much so that if I pick this front foot up right now, I feel like I'm going to turn open because of that, because I'm wound up all the way around my hip socket. Now, here's the thing. The next part is gonna be the hand pivot, okay? But we're not gonna worry about that yet. We're just gonna focus on the load with the rear leg, okay? But when I get loaded on and around right here, I wanna feel like my leg is itching to pull me and take this bat for a ride, okay? Now, I'll cover the hand pivot later, but the goal here is that once I actually start my hand pivot, my rear leg takes me to this ball and I'm launching everything out away from me, okay? So I wanna feel like my barrel is spinning this way, okay, which is north, south, and out towards the second baseman for me. When I do that and I'm really loaded and coiled around this rear leg and I feel like it's about to go, I can feel the suddenness in my swing and I can feel myself take my leg taking my body and my barrel for a ride. That's the direction. The direction in the swing is the way that I pivot my hands and my leg taking this barrel for a ride to the ball, okay? So start with the stretch and fire, get really good there first, and then we usually move over to no strides, okay? And for some people, it's a little bit easier to go from the stretch and fire position where they already figured out how to coil, and then they just move this foot over here into a no stride, so this foot is really wound up, right? Because not that many people hit like this, okay? Some of you may hit with that foot a little bit more internally rotated, which is fine. Um, I know a lot of guys, I worked with a big leaguer over this last um, off season, and after he figured out the rear leg, he actually decided to internally rotate his back foot a little bit more so he could feel that stretch and fire feel in his normal stance, okay? So for some of you, that may be how you go about it. But for us, we'll start stretch and fire, and then we'll move over to the no stride, which is here. And now we have the same goal, the same feel, but now we're kind of set up more even with the pitcher like this, okay? Now, in order to get the most out of the rear leg and to create suddenness, we have to figure out how to one, fuse our whole body together so we can launch instantly when we want to launch, okay? We don't want to have a lot of slop in our swing, which means we have to figure out the hand pivot. That's going to be next. But when I get all the way loaded on and around this rear leg and I feel like I'm one fused unit, that one fused unit feel allows me to launch everything at once. I, don't, I don't, shouldn't have to feel like I have to load, do something else, shift my weight, and then swing. Okay, There's, that takes way too much time. We have to be able to swing the moment the guy gets to ball release. The moment the ball comes out of his hand, we have to be able to choose right then if we want to swing or if we want to hold our position for just a tick longer and then swing um, for the off speed, okay? So now, <clears throat> after you get good at those two drills, so you did the stretch and fire, then you moved on to the no stride, the next drill that we're gonna cover is the hover. When you do the hover or the flamingo, whatever you want to call it, I kind of bounce around with my lingo, but nonetheless, it just means that we're weighting this back leg, okay, and I'm starting with this foot in the air. If you know Kerry Carpenter, he was on ESPN and he discussed this drill as well. Um, so for our guys, what we'll do is the cues here will be to stretch this front foot away as we start to do that same move that we did in the stretch and fire and in the no stride, okay? That back right pocket going towards the pitcher. Now we're gonna do that as this front foot goes away from us. And uh, another cue for that is I wanna try to keep my head over my back foot. If I can keep my head over my back foot, when I do that, I'm really gonna be controlling my body in space because the moment that my head goes forward, I'm gonna to start to lunge that way, okay? And then I only have so much time to close the gap and hurry up and swing, and I'm gonna be susceptible to off speed, all right? So 
Get good at those three drills. I'm going to keep saying that because it's going to take time. It's not something that's just going to happen overnight. For higher level guys, more advanced guys, they can get a feel for their rear leg pretty quickly. But for most high school and college guys, it takes some time. And it's going to be foreign, especially if you're so used to weighting this front foot and doing some type of a scissor and doing all these extra moves in order to swing. It's going to feel different. It's going to feel weird. But that's part of the process. I would rather be in control of when I want to swing than have to swing just because my weight has shifted, okay? So now I mentioned getting your load done at ball release. One of the goals with the rear leg is that we have to find our spot, okay? Our spot with the rear leg is gonna be the moment we feel like all we have to do right now is snap our barrel, that's it. So we're gonna get all the way there. We're gonna max out this hip coil and we're gonna feel like in that moment I can choose to swing when he's at ball release. Now, in order to get the most out of the rear leg, we gotta learn the hand pivot. So now we're gonna start covering the hand pivot, but those three drills, stretch and fire, no stride, flamingo, nail them down and then you'll be ready for more. So in regards to the hand pivot, you guys have seen all the videos of this move going back behind our body, okay? And I know it's really controversial because everybody says this. Even when you watch some of the big leaguers right now on ESPN talking about how they go about their swing, they'll show their practice swings, which will be front foot down early and coming across their body like that. But then you watch them in the game and the barrel's turning back behind their head. And you're like, how does that make sense? Because when you tell the really hard working kid to swing down on the ball, chop wood, and take the knob to the ball, if they're not genetically gifted to already do the thing, then that's exactly what they're gonna do, and that's exactly what I did. So I ended up getting all the same cues that everybody else has got in their career, and because I worked so hard at it, I ended up getting really good at that, really good at it. But the problem is my effort, or my efficiency, wasn't very high. And so I could only be so good. I, I reached my potential doing this, and I had to try to figure out another way. By the time I figured it out, it was too late in the game for me and I had to call it quits. So I hope that if you actually put this into play, you're gonna give it enough time and discipline and consistency to really learn how to do this, okay? Don't give it one or two days of just trying to turn the barrel behind you and then not immediately get the result you want and then bang it, okay? That's not how anything works. You should expect to see a small decline in your performance when you first start. Whenever you learn a new skill, you should expect your current skills to diminish in order to improve in that skill later on. That's the whole point to training. It happens in the weight room, it happens on the field, it happens with throwing mechanics, it happens with hitting mechanics. It's always the same thing. You gotta approach this long term for the long game. Okay, so for the hand pivot, we're gonna use this thing called the propeller. Uh, the reason why I like it is because you can hear the wind behind you uh, when you're actually doing the hand pivot and it's also a lot easier to learn it with lighter implements. So I usually bounce around from the propeller to a small bat, which I have right here. Hey, you can get any small bat. We just have a woody right here. Um, but nonetheless, I wanna use shorter and smaller implements at first so that way I don't have to use my arms, okay? The arms are the enemy in the swing. If I feel like I have to use my arms and push them through the zone in order to hit, it's gonna be a tough day. So what this does is it teaches you how to be really short, compact, and just learn how to do the hand pivot really quickly. All right, now this is Rich's propeller's bat. Um, he dropped this recently, and he's actually the one who popularized the swing method by transforming Aaron Judge's career from his 2016 season to 2017. They've been working together ever since. Um, and I know if you're watching this video and you're interested in HLP, you already know that and you already know all about Rich. So now we're gonna get into the hand pivot. So for our guys, we like to start with our elbows tucked up against the rib cage. That way we don't use our arms. And then we're gonna be really aggressive, turning this with just our forearm supinating right in here. So I wanna feel like my top hand's going this way and turning the barrel down and my bottom hand's going this way and turning the barrel down behind me and the knob up. Okay, so I wanna feel like the knob is coming up down here on the bottom. Another cue for that is like I'm splitting the wood between my hands. So if I do that really quick, I don't know if the mic can hear it, but I can hear the air getting cut behind me because of this bat, okay? So after I have our athletes feel that out, then I have them throw them on their hand, and then they do this over there. Okay. Then we usually place it on their neck, and then we have this feel right there, okay? Now, when we're doing this, I want to imagine that my barrel, like I mentioned earlier, is spinning this way, north-south, um, kind of down this line of the plate, okay? So this backside of the plate, I want to imagine that my barrel is spinning that way. Now, why, did I, why do I want to do that? Because if my rear leg is doing what it needs to be doing, 
So my rear leg, remember from earlier, it's pulling me, it's gonna turn me. If I have this oppo launch where my barrel's pivoting behind me up that line towards second base, when I do step one, then step two is gonna be my leg pulling me, taking me for a ride. That's gonna be my oppo first approach. I don't know about you, but when I played and we always had our move them over rounds, every single time I felt like I just had to fist the ball over to second base and just push it over there and place it over there. That's not a good feeling. That's not what you do in a game, okay? So this feel of turning the barrel from behind us and having our leg take us for a ride, that feeling is the oppo first feeling. And if I can do that on every single pitch, every single height that doesn't matter where it's at in the zone, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be able to be inside the ball and have that oppo first approach on every pitch without having to think about making sure I take my hands to it in order to go oppo. All right, so next, after the athlete starts to understand and grasp the concept of turning this behind them, it usually takes a few days to really get that. Then we start working into drills where we actually have the T placed on our back hip. Okay, so for the T placed on our black hip, what we're gonna do from there is exaggerate pivoting this thing, having our rear leg turn us, and just snap stops. Just catching balls right off our neck right there, okay? I wanna feel like I get a really good coil in my rear leg, my front foot's weightless, my back foot has all the weight on it, and now I'm just learning how to do this and then feel my leg take me. And often, I will break it down just like that and then have the athletes get a feel for that. So what they'll do, Step one, they'll turn here, just the forearms. Notice I didn't elbow down, nothing like that. Just forearms here, and then rear leg turn, okay? That's the feel. If you're doing this right, the bottom of this barrel, or the bottom of this propeller, will be on top of your forearm. If you're doing it with a game bat, maybe that's all you got, that's fine. It'll be the same thing. So if I pivot here, rear leg turns me, I'm still gonna feel like that thing is on top of my forearms when I'm done, okay? Those are snap stops off the back hip. I wanna get good there, and then I'll move back a little bit and have uh, the T in a normal position and then feel the exact same effort behind me and then let my rear leg take me through it and do full swings from there, all right? Now, after I move on from that, that is where we're gonna start really working on how to control the load and sync everything up together. So normally what we'll do in order to figure out how to sync the two pivot points up, our rear leg being a pivot point, our hand pivot being another pivot point, then I'll have guys set up on the side to do soft toss. Now when they're doing soft toss, we usually stick with a lot of stretch and fires, no strides, and snap stops. A snap stop is where I'm just doing my initial launch as quick as I can, but I have the ability to stop it almost right at contact, if not just a little bit after, okay? A snap stop is not shifting weight, pushing through the ball, and then stopping out here. I see a lot of drills like that. That is not the idea you're practicing. The, you're not working on this is all I'm gonna say. So when we're doing a snap stop, we're trying to feel this barrel path behind us, okay? Instantly knob up as hard as we can with our uh, bottom hand, barrel down as hard as we can, as fast as we can, as sudden as we can with our top hand. Doing that together as our rear leg is pulling, that's where we're trying to feel the hand pivot. Okay, so we'll start with a lot of side toss, snap stops, no strides, stretch and fires. Then we'll move into the flamingo drill, a lot of the same things. Now, when you start doing snap stops and your foot's in the air, that's where you start to really figure out how to get to your spot. Your spot is the launch spot. It's the moment in time where you actually have the ability to swing without doing any extra moves. So if you slow down camera of your favorite players, uh, back that center field camera, not the side, but from the center fielder, you can see when the pitcher releases the ball where that hitter is at in their swing, okay? Most of the great hitters are at a position where the next move is the barrel turning behind them and they're instantly launching. That's why you see a lot of the best hitters in the game, when they have a take, they have a high level take, meaning their barrel's going behind them and then they pull back like this, okay? And sometimes they can't pull back fast enough and they end up actually hitting it or fouling it off behind them like that. But you don't see a lot of high level guys doing takes like this. So if that's you, highly recommend, look at that center field camera and try to see if you're getting to your spot or not. I promise you, you're probably not if you're taking like that because you're probably not getting to your spot until the ball's about halfway to you and then you're just trying to figure out when to swing and throw your hands at it. So we'll move on from that now and we're gonna start talking about how to sync them up. All right, so we've progressed from the rear leg We've learned the concept of the hand pivot. We've done a lot of snap stop, stretch and fires, hover swings, things like that on side flips, T. And now we have a decent understanding, a decent feel of what we're trying to figure out in beeps, okay? 
the last thing I want to cover is up the back, all right? Now, for me, it's up the back, down the mountain. When I say down the mountain, that means for every inch that I'm coiling, for every inch this back right pocket goes this way, is every inch that I go up the back. So I'm thinking this meat is loading that way, okay? And for every inch that I go up the back is every inch that I'm going forward, okay? That's the stretch. That makes me feel like I'm wound up without, it, the stretch is not this, by the way. You see a lot of videos like that. It's not pulling my knee away from my bat and doing anything like that. The stretch is self-contained. You can use it, you can utilize it, and it can control your load for you. But it's a stretch that's coming up the backside of your body and up your back a little bit. So for us, again, it's for every inch that I coil is every inch that I also go up the back. And every inch that I do that is every inch that I go forward. So now I'm just trying to find my spot that I can swing at the moment the guy gets the ball release. If I can do that, now I have all the adjustability in the world. Now, the rest is gonna be up to your decision-making process. You either make good decisions or bad decisions. Okay, so now we know that we need to get ready at ball release, okay? That's gonna be right here. We know we wanna go up the back, down the mountain, and control our load and find our spot to launch from right here. But now let's cover the biggest discrepancy about the swing, which is that it can't hit the high pitch when you're turning the barrel behind you. That is false. Okay. It's the same exact pivot. The only difference is on a higher pitch, your pivot is just going to be a little bit more horizontal. Okay. So it's going to be just a little bit more like this because it's higher, but it's the same. This move supinating the forearm is the exact same move. When I do this on the low pitch, it's the exact same move. So here's the low. It's the exact same move when it's right down the middle. It's the exact same move when it's high. It's all the exact same thing. Okay, you definitely have more ability to hit the high pitch if you don't push the bat and you create barrel depth to catch it. One of the biggest things about this swing is that because I have barrel depth, if I'm anticipating 90, but it ends up being 93, I can still win and catch a barrel back here and shoot something to right field. Okay, but if I'm pushing my barrel and I'm not in the zone until now, I'm not going to be able to win on that. Okay, unless I'm really, really good with my timing and I'm almost guessing. And I, I gotta be almost close to perfect in order to make good contact with pitches like that. So you have a lot more adjustability when you have that barrel depth. If it's slow, all you'll do is adjust your swing a little bit and then you'll be able to hit it out front too. So you're gonna have way more time in the zone when you create that barrel depth. So yes, you can definitely hit the high pitch with this. You can hit the pitch down the middle and you can hit the low and away pitch doing the exact same thing. The low and away pitch, you're gonna have a little bit more tilt from the hip socket in that pitch. It's something that we didn't cover with the rear leg because usually with beginners, I'm not trying to confuse them and throw the whole kitchen sink at them. So we're not really working on this. Once they figure out how to get rear legged and actually learn how to control it, then we start working on tilting from the hip socket. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover that concept really quick, but we're not gonna to dive too deep into it. So my spine is neutral right now. But when I start to tilt from the hip socket, you'll see my spine is still neutral because it's connected to my hips. But it looks like my shoulders are dipping, so it changes the angles of my shoulders. But I'm not doing a torso bend, dipping like that, changing the angles of my shoulders where my spine actually starts to go like this. I'm not doing that. I'm just learning how to tilt from the hip socket. So if I hit this low and away pitch like that, and I learn how to tilt from the hip socket, it ends up being the exact same hand pivot running into that ball the exact same way that I would here. Now, obviously on a high pitch, I'm gonna have a little bit less tilt and my barrel pass is gonna be a little bit more horizontal, but it's the same feel. My, our method of training the swing to have this type of a launch with our barrel and have our rear leg pulling that barrel through the zone can take you to every height and every pitch location. The rest is just up to your decision making. So I know in this video, we covered a lot. We covered the rear leg, we covered the hand pivot, we covered how you make uh, a fused unit with your whole body, getting ready at release, the whole nine. And for a lot of you, these are gonna be new concepts that you've never heard of before. If you're just stumbling across this video, you've never heard of HLP before. Um, but for others, you're kind of in this process of trying to figure out it on your own. So you're digesting a lot of free content online and you're just trying to put bits and pieces together. Here's the thing, with my own personal career, I tried to do the exact same thing. I tried to penny pitch in my training and not pay it, not pay my way in order to figure it out. And that was a difficult choice for me. I wish if I could go back in time, I would have just paid to figure it out sooner because when you have somebody guiding you in this process, it's way easier to figure it out. 
because they can let you know in the moment, like that's the right thing. You're right, on, you're right on par with what you need to be doing. You're getting quicker. You're doing these things. You're constantly getting video feedback. Um, and even with our pro guys, they're in the league right now. They're sending me videos every couple of weeks like, hey, I'm losing the feel of my rear leg. I'm losing the feel of my hand pivot. They've been doing this training for years, but they still have a hard time being able to keep it consistent, just like any other swing in the world. You gotta continuously work at it. It takes a lot of discipline and effort to do it. And it's something you're gonna need tightened up throughout your whole career. So my recommendation to you is to not just digest free content in order to figure it out. But I know only 99% of you will do that. 99% of you are only gonna do the free content and try to figure it out. 1% of you will pay somebody who can teach this in order to figure it out. And for that 1%, if you're interested in getting help with this, somebody to guide you along that process, all you gotta do, find our website um, down in the description below, click that, apply for training, and we'll talk to you soon.